Hey guys, welcome back to What the Fat. This is your host, Dr. Ryan Lowry, coming to you on Friday. Hope you all have had an amazing week. We've been cranking through, got a lot of really exciting stuff in the works. It's just been grinding day after day. Um, but I hope you guys took a little bit away from the two episodes previous uh, to this week. The first one being on Wednesday, we talked a little bit about acorns to oak trees, really understanding that each and every one of you uh, and your friends, colleagues, every single person you come in contact with has a ton of potential. It's allowing that right environment to allow them to flourish. And hopefully you can be one of those people that not only do it for yourself, but allow others around you. And I promise you that's more rewarding than allowing yourself to flourish into an oak tree, like helping others around you do it. Like that's one of the most amazing things in the world. Uh, and then on Thursday, yesterday, we talked a little bit about uh, me addressing some of the comments and concerns that people have with uh, the vegan cardiologist that basically came out and said, eating keto is dumb, you're going to die fast. Not only that, but eating red meat is terrible for you. And oh, by the way, eggs give you cancer. And none of that's actually legitimately true. And so I addressed each one of those points. So hopefully you got a chance to hear that and hopefully share that with someone who might need it. Um, Today I want to talk about an interesting documentary I watched the other night, and it's a fascinating company. Uh, I've heard about them for many years, and the first time I heard about them was because our COO, was former, his name's Sam Baylor, was formerly in the healthcare industry, and he was a vice president of ancillary operations for one of the largest multi-specialty practices in all of the Northeast. And so he's been around healthcare for several years. And this company pitched him on the idea of utilizing their te quote unquote technology for their patients and he turned them down. And he got a ton of heat for it, for turning them down because they were supposed to be the next best thing since sliced bread, or in our case, since sliced avocado. Um, so they he, he turned them down and got a ton of heat for it and it's fascinating to me and now like he looks back on it and he's like laughing to some degree well he's laughing because of how much heat he got from certain individuals but also he's very distraught that so many people got taken for a ride by this company and there was a whole documentary on it and it was fascinating to understand the story and the company's called theranos and i think i'm pronouncing it right theranos and uh basically they were a company started by originally started by a 19 year old and her name was elizabeth holmes and basically what their goal was to do was to be able to do all these different medical procedures with just uh, a drop of blood from a finger and i was like this is incredible like if that were capable looking at cholesterol looking at markers of um of insulin resistance looking at markers of uh, anything, a cancer, like looking at all these different markers with just a drop of blood from a finger prick, that could be an absolute game changer. Think about it. You could, anyone could take a drop of blood from a finger prick, stick it on a, on a uh, blood spot, and then send it out and they can analyze it. How radically would that change the entire healthcare industry versus, oh, we need to take something from a blood draw from your vein, uh, insert it in, spin it up, send it out for analysis, like, and it became, it, obviously, it's a very expensive industry. There's billions of dollars in it. And her goal was to come in and disrupt this billions and billions of dollar uh, healthcare industry and provide what, I think they called it the Edison, was the name of the device that she had created that was supposed to be able to analyze these blood spots. Um, and it was a very interesting documentary. It turned out it was all horseshit. None of it was legitimate. Um, and she's now facing a ton of criminal charges for it. But I think there were some interesting takeaways. Like I said, you guys heard me talk yesterday about being open and fascinated with everything from people's different views of politics, religion, nutrition, conspiracy theories, whatever you want to have. I'm open to any anything and everything. It doesn't mean I have to agree with it. I just like hearing different people's points of views. I think it's, I think it's fascinating um, to understand uh, how different people think and react to certain things. But I took a little bit away from this, this documentary that I thought was really, really interesting. Uh, and the way that Elizabeth really uh, drove this company 
and manipulated people, which is unfortunate, sad, but there's something to be learned here, right? There's always a bright side of everything, and there's something interesting to be learned here. But Elizabeth Holmes, she was she was 19. She was so a lot of you now might have seen the cover. Uh, it was a recent cover. I think it was only a couple months ago. Where is it? Kylie Jenner. Yeah. So Kylie Jenner, they said, is on pace to become the first self self-made. I'm gonna put quotes around self-made. Um, but she had a great. She works hard. She's. I, I bet you she does. Uh, she does do a lot of hard work. Even though her mom and her sisters ultimately bred her and set her up for success. But Kylie was on pace to become the first female self-made billionaire. Um, but in actuality, Elizabeth Holmes was that. Uh, she was she was documented. Her company at one at its peak was valued at ten billion dollars. So she was the first of the first females that was that was uh, identified as the first female billionaire. And a lot of people don't think about that or understand because Theranos had this huge up and then this very quick collapse. And younger generations aren't even aware of how much of an impact this actually could have had and did have on a lot of people. And so Elizabeth basically went in, she created this concept, this idea that she could measure all these different markers with just a, a drop of blood. And she convinced a lot of people that this was possible. Uh, I'll let you guys watch the documentary. I highly encourage you to look it up, do, do some research on your own, because it's just fascinating. And I don't want to get anything wrong for you and, and misconstrue the story. But they were doing a lot of shady stuff. They were with the scientists, with everyone that was involved. Like They were doing a lot of shady stuff where they were pretending like they were utilizing the Edison or the machine, but they were doing benchtop work and actually doing it. But when they started getting more and more samples, one of the things that you need to do in science is look at the validity and the reliability of each measurement. So how valid it is, is how like legitimately how valid it is, how reliable a machine is, meaning that with any of our machines that we utilize in our laboratory, it's kind of like a scale. If I step on a scale and it's, it reads that I'm 180 pounds, if I walk around and come back and step on that scale, it should read that I'm 180 pounds. But if something's not reliable, like if a scale is not reliable, I'd step on that scale, say 180, and I'd walk, I'd walk down the, the hallway and come back, step on that scale, and it reads 185. Well, I just didn't gain five pounds. It's just that that scale's not reliable. Um, so that's one of the things to keep in mind. And that's one of the challenges that they had was their devices weren't very reliable. So people were sending in to look at things like cholesterol or look at insulin, and they might get a reading of 150 one time and 300 another time. Those are two radically different markers, and, and that could be the difference between someone being prescribed statins versus someone being like, hey, you're completely healthy, you're fine, keep doing your thing. Like, completely messing with people's health, and that's why it was such a big, big problem, but that's also why it had such a big upside if it could truly help and tell a lot of these people. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't pan out. Unfortunately, a lot of it was bogus, absolute insanity. Um, but she ended up raising, I think she raised $400 million from venture capital just on this concept and this idea of a device that legitimately did not work. And so to me, one of the takeaways is how confident she was in her device even though deep down she could have been a sociopath. I mean, at some level, I guess you have to be a sociopath to not understand that your device isn't working, to raise that much money, and then literally put people's health at jeopardy. Um, but her confidence of literally going on segment after segment, interview after interview, and her going on and saying, like, this is what we're doing. We're working with these individuals. These are the types of things that I was, uh, uh, we're doing here at Theranos. Her confidence is what sold $400 million worth. Clearly, it wasn't the machine. Obviously, the potential and the possibility and the technology contributed to that, but her confidence in her product is what sold those individuals. And so for me, that was one of the takeaways is like, obviously, she has sociopathic tendencies. She lied about a lot of stuff, but anyone's ability to be confident is what sells people, is what convinces people 
uh, ultimately a sale is a relay of passion. Like if you're truly passionate about what you're doing, it's all, and you can relay your passion to some other, other individual, they will become passionate and excited about it. Maybe to, not to the same degree or, or extent that you are, but they will become interested and intrigued, and that's when you have the ability to express to them an idea. And a lot of times people get weary and turned down by this term sale, but a sale could be the same thing as picking up uh, a girl or a guy at a bar. Like ultimately you're selling yourself or selling yourself to an employer. Like all of that is dictated in sales. A lot of it's a relay of passion um, and confidence, right? If, if a person comes up to you, wh whether you're a girl or a guy or you have a girl or a guy come up to you and they're like, hey, um, you know, I was thinking, do you want to go? Like obviously you're not going to be intrigued by that person. Like they're clearly not confident. But if they come up and, uh, uh, of course, hopefully if they don't use some terrible tagline that they read online or that they found on Tinder, but if they come up with confidence and they say something extremely nice about you and you legitimately have a conversation, like that's the difference between actually creating a foundational relationship or not, or picking someone up if that's what you're trying to do at a bar or not. Same thing applies with interviews. The same thing applies with sales, right? If you're sitting in an interview with someone and they're like, well, you know, I don't know if I can do Word very well and I've done PowerPoint, but I'm not really sure how it works. But if they come in and they're like, yep, I'm proficient. I've utilized PowerPoint. I've utilized Excel. Here's all the things that I could do for you and your company and here's how I think I could progress them forward. That's someone with confidence. That's someone I'm willing to take a shot on. Clearly, and again, though she had a different motive, but clearly Elizabeth had that confidence and was able to sell not only investors, but she sold the world ultimately on this idea that it was possible to utilize her technology and, and whatever she was putting together to measure a lot of these health outcomes. So I'm fascinated by that. I think it was something that maybe if you guys have some time this weekend check out more if you've never heard of it check it out but check out that documentary and check out some of it. there was also a 60 minutes piece on it but check it out and look into it because even though it's really scary a lot of people lost a lot of money a lot of money unfortunately with her but uh, I think there's some things to be lessons to be learned and I try and like I said I try and pull out little pieces from each one of these to understand that confidence sells at the end of the day she had a she had an idea. She had a product that potentially could have disrupted a billion dollar industry, but unfortunately it didn't work. Investors for some, I don't know why, but they didn't question it or look deeper into the science and uh, she sold them. She sold them. So confidence is key. If you're going out to the bars this weekend and you're trying to find a soulmate, uh, hopefully you're not finding a soulmate at the bar, but if, if that's your goal, uh, hey, be confident. If you're going to an interview, be confident. If you're trying to just go meet up with friends, be confident. Um, confidence is key, and I think I think everyone can take that away. Uh, you know, she has a she has a book coming out. That I'm interested to find a little bit more. Uh, it's called Bad Blood. Pretty clever title, um, but it's called Bad Blood. But hopefully, they'll talk more about this, and I'm interested to learn more about the story. But again, the takeaway is this: confidence is essential. Sales is a relay of passion. So make sure you're relaying that passion across to everyone in your life. And uh, a lot of times it's more than what you say. It's how you react. It's what you do. It's your body language. All that factors in to that relay of passion. So with that, guys, I appreciate you tuning in this week. I hope you took a ton away from this podcast and can hopefully go on and share it with friends and family all throughout the world. Hope each and every one of you have an amazing weekend. Remember, be confident. Um, hope you all uh, continue to make positivity louder. You all know how much I appreciate and, and love each and one of you uh, for doing that. And come back next week. I'll have a special guest on. I think you guys will love them. So remember, make positivity louder. Hope you all have an amazing weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Love you all.